Okay, uh, now I'll give an introduction uh, and overview to deploying Bamini on AWS using Kubernetes. I hope you are able to see my screen. Yes. I'm not sure. Screen. Yeah, okay. Good. Okay. Fine. Uh, so there are some prerequisites to this topic. Uh, you should know about AWS. You should know about Terraform, Kubernetes, Helm, all of these things. Only then will you be able to understand it fully. And you all must know that uh, Bamini or Bamini Lite is cloud ready. There is uh, enough documentation and code, everything is available. So anybody can just go and try it out. Uh, so I'll first give an overview of the architecture that, that we use for uh, Bamini on cloud. Now it all starts from here, the infrastructure as code. We use Terraform uh, as an IAC tool. Uh, so the I'll take you through the code later, but when we deploy the code, the infrastructure as code uh, using Terraforms, what that does is it uh, starts a few services on our AWS account. Things like uh, networking, the VPC subnets, everything get created automatically. Uh, the EKS cluster gets created, the Elastic Kubernetes cluster. Uh, the RDS database gets created. Uh, and uh, all of that, after all of these services are created, uh, then comes the next part, which is the Helm umbrella chart. So uh, this is where we bring in the Helm, which is the package manager for Kubernetes. Uh, so this comes in and it has its own dependencies. Like say it has to use the same Docker image that we just saw in the Docker Compose. The same image get deployed as pods on the cluster. So it has to reach out to the Docker registry and uh, Helm charts registry. Now I'll explain it uh, in a later slide what, what this is. So this is the overall uh, architecture of our cloud. Now I'll move on to the next page. So here we have mentioned uh, a few links. These are important links if you want to know about uh, cloud deployment for Bamni. So the first two are the uh, documentation links and the last two are the two uh, two important repositories, I can call them as two important repositories for the deployment to cloud. The first one, Bami Infra, I'll start from here. I'll open this repository. This is our Bami Infra repository. This hosts the Terraform code. And along with Terraform, there are some other tools here as well. So looking at the directory structure here, you'll see this Terraform folder here. So if you go inside it, you can find all the Terraform code. And other than this, uh, there are some other modules. And in order to give an overview of how all this works, I'll take help of our pipelines. Uh, so I'll open it quickly. So you what know, happens sorry. when we... Uh, yeah. Before we get into the pipeline, uh, let's give a pass for any questions because this is a sure. broad topic. Sure, sure. Yeah. Any sure. questions? Yeah. Any... Hmm. Yeah. So actually this introduction, this is a very brief introduction session. Uh, if we want to cover it in deep, uh, we'll plan a separate training session for the same. So this is right. an introduction session because this involves different things around Terraform, infrastructure as code, Kubernetes and everything. So that would be a separate training altogether. This is just an introduction session. Yes. So to explain this, how it works quickly, I'll uh, take you to the pipeline. So what happens is that uh, when the infrastructure uh, gets deployed, even before that, we use some tools, some infrastructure as uh, the static code analysis tools like TerraScan, TFLint, TFSec. What they do uh, is that they uh, scan our code and they uh, check for some security compliances. If there are some syntax errors, they they try basically improve the security and you know, reliability of our IAC. Okay, so all of those uh, tools are here, and then going to Terraform. Uh, you will find this main.tf, uh, which calls all the modules. So these modules is what uh, starts the other services. So if you if I go inside the modules, it creates the VPCs and other network related things, creates the cluster, the file systems, the relational database service, everything get created. And after those things are created, it uh, starts the nodes, creates the nodes. Now uh, we can choose how many nodes we want to deploy to the cluster. That's all. Uh, configurable. We can also start a node and, you know, we can uh, say that, okay, I want to, uh, you know, you like say, for example, we have the performance environment here where we are using giving dedicated resources to some of our pods. 
that's also possible. So that's what this uh, Bami infra repository does. Uh, and there is this uh, documentation here, which you can follow. Uh, and it talks about a lot of things. First of all, it, it, uh, it will uh, tell us how do we create users? How do we manage access? How do we create policies, roles, everything? Then how do we deploy the infrastructure? All of that is also documented here. And once we are done with uh, the Bamini infra creation, we can head over to the next important uh, repository, which is the Helm umbrella chart. And uh, before I go there, I would like to have a you to have a look at this documentation here. So this one talks about the Helm charts, what are Helm charts, and uh, why we use Helm charts in Bamini, uh, the structure that we follow, and I would like to point out this uh, diagram here. And it so you know that Bamini has lots of services, right? And all of those services have their individual repositories on GitHub. So I'll give you an example. For example, for OpenMRS, we have uh, something called as OpenMRS Distro Bamini repository. Uh, there is a different repository for Bamini Web. Greater has its own repository. Udo has its own, right? All of these repositories individually um, publish Docker image that we saw yesterday. Docker image get published to the doc Docker Hub. And these uh, repositories also publish the Helm charts. Now, this is the Kubernetes configuration uh, that gets published as Helm charts. And after we publish these Helm charts, uh, then comes the umbrella pipeline or the Helm umbrella chart. So, which is what this repository holds. Now, it has this chart.yaml, an important file, uh, under which we, we, we are mentioning these de dependencies. These are uh, nothing but the same individual charts that we publish. We just mention those here. We can choose to enable or disable these services. So when we run this, uh, deploy this Helm chart, what will happen is it will pull all that, all those, all of those individual charts, bring them together, and then publish them onto our uh, EKS cluster. <clears throat> and along with the, uh, these charts that get pulled, uh, we also have something, something in the templates, which is this ingress. This takes care of the networking part. So that's an overview of uh, how it works. Now, if you are interested in knowing more about this, you can let us know. We can plan a different session for uh, this topic. Are there any other questions? Okay, uh, Mohan, I see a question on logs. How persistent are the logs? I think you already talked about I'm taking that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see okay. two different questions by Thomas around logs. Um, so I'll just quickly wanted to share my screen and show that. So I'll share screen again. So Thomas, regarding your question around how the logs are persisted, yes, you are right. If you re recreate the container, the logs may be lost without centralized logging. So that's where we thought a centralized logging setup to collect and aggregate the logs would be helpful. And we came with the Locky stack for logging. This is again open source. So now with centralized logging, if you look at the Docker Compose file under logging, you will see a volume of under the Locky service. So Locky is the log aggregator service. You see there is a volume mount called as Locky. So this holds all the logging data. And until and unless this volume is not deleted, your logs will be persisted again. And as I said again, uh, there is a retention period. By default, we have it as 24 hours. If you want to increase that period, please speak. You can add this here. And after 24 hours, the older logs would be automatically managed, which, which would save your storage space as well. Okay, thank you. My question was more about the like the HTTPD logs because now I'm using uh, Go Access to to pass them and to create uh, reports about uh, web statistics using the like the regular uh, uh, HTTP HTTP log file. So I wanted to know if it was possible as well to to do the same. Okay, so. With Locky, you can view the logs of this Bumni web container, which handles all our front end requests. For example, if I go here, then the query, we can see all the logs are being, all the requests would be logged here. So, Thomas, is this the one you are expecting? 
Yeah, but I mean, is it possible to like to have to have that file physically on the system and okay. to be to be persistent, so I can I can manipulate it in uh, in Go Access. Okay, uh, you want this log file to be written somewhere? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just like uh, just like it is for uh, like classic uh, HTTP server. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So it should be in the container. You can create a volume mount for the specific path. The logs would be written to a file in the container. So we'll look into that and get back to you on that. We'll send it out okay. by steps. How we do the same. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, I do have a question off topic you are discussing, if I may. Yeah, when do you plan to launch Kudu 14? Yeah, so as part of the roadmap discussion calls that has happened, uh, Kudu upgrade is something that's in our plan and uh, that initiative has not yet started based on the requirements uh, and prioritizations based on the support that we get. We'll soon prioritize that and Kudu upgrade would be the next upgrade that we plan. So hope that answers your question. Or do you need any? If you need any more details, please feel free to post in our Bumni community channel, and it's already there in the roadmap discussion as well. Okay, thank you. So there is no specific date when you plan to la launch it, right? No, the date are, dates are not yet finalized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So if you want to bring in some topics around it, please feel free to join the Bomni path call. So that happens every Wednesday and you will get the reminders as well in the community channel. So please feel free to join in and we can discuss the same there as well. Um, so how, how can I join there? Yeah, uh, we have a Zoom meet and it's it's available in the Bomni community channel. So if you, uh -huh. yeah, if you check out the Bomni community channel, you will yes. have reminders being posted and you can join in the session. So yesterday we had a session and uh, see, you can see, we have the reminder for platform. Uh -huh. okay. That happens every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. I guess. So please feel free to join there and bring in your topics. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Mohan, we have another question. Okay, in Bamni, is there a way to allow the clinician to enter the date and time of specimen collection when placing a lab order? Okay, uh, we are not sure. We are mostly covering around the infrastructure, but. I'll get this answered soon. I'll I'll send it to your mailbox. Uh, or Deepthi, if you are around, if you can help answer this question, I'll post the question in chat. So the question is, is there a way to allow the clinician to enter the date and time of specimen collection when placing a lab order? Uh, lab order currently we do not have. We have it for the bacteriology alone. Okay, okay. Maybe we need to discuss how we can take up this. Yeah, so uh, can you post the same in our Bumni community channel so that people, if someone has already tried, they can help you out? Sure, yeah, so okay. Uh, so I just want to call out again. So if you run into any issues or face any troubles, please feel free to reach out to any of us. You can use the community channel or we have a separate channel in Bumni called as Bumni. Uh, you can post there. We'll be happy to respond to you for any issues or any topics that you need discussion. Okay. Cool. I think we don't have any questions. And yeah, in this slide, we have the reference links. We'll send out the training content soon. You can follow these links to get an idea of uh, more idea around AWS. Or if you feel that you may you need uh, an in-depth training like this again, we can plan one. Please do let us. Know. Yeah. Then moving on. Any more questions? Um, I do have another one, if I may. Yeah, yeah please go. Uh, 
currently we have a lot of uh, requirements from clients that we need to update some observation forms with some new forms. And um, uh, while doing this with Form Builder, I noticed that uh, uh, there are not a lot of options. Is there any other way that we can create these forms? Mm, okay, this is again a functional question. Deepthi, would you like to take this up? Yes, Mohan. Uh, so if I understand the question correctly, do you want to customize any form? Uh, yeah, I want to create new forms. But for example, when I use a uh, uh, form builder, the table has only two columns. I need it with four columns or I need another sections. So is there any other tool that uh, we can use to create uh, forms? Yeah, we currently can do uh, the form creation through this implementer interface, the form builder yes. which you have mentioned. Yes. So you were not able to uh, fulfill the requirement using this? Yes. Um, for example, if you go to table, you want to insert a table. And uh, here you can only uh, add two columns. For example, I need it with four. Is there okay. any way to do this? No, uh, I don't think so as of now that's possible in this form builder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, uh, I also have other requirements, but um, uh, can we use something else uh, to in order to achieve this? Some ex external or, I don't know, um, other mm -hmm. forms that we can use to implement here. Okay, uh, I, I think, you know, this is a good topic for a discussion. We'll, we can connect, have this topic during the platform because uh, people would join in. Okay. Yeah, please feel free to come to the next platform. You can have all your requirements and, you know, we can discuss that in the platform. Uh, so maybe the next platform is on, uh, I'll share you the date and schedule. Maybe for the next platform, I'll extend you the invite. Okay. Okay, thank you. 22. Yes, it's on 22. I'll extend you the invite. Okay. Uh, I think any more questions? Uh, I have one question. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Suppose uh, uh, in my development environment, uh, I'm using uh, the light and I make changes in database and uh, configuration and as well as in HTML pages also. So will I be able to migrate everything on uh, on the production in one go? Um, so for example, let's say if we're building on top of Bomni apps, you can build your own Docker image. That's possible. So we'll cover that tomorrow. How do you customize Bomni apps and build on your own? And for config, as we covered today, uh, you can build an image, use that, push that image to Docker Hub, and then you can use it in your production environment. Okay, so, uh, okay, okay, uh, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. So in production, it's recommended that you have an image built and then use it, because in volume mounts would be difficult to trace in production environment, so it's better you tag and push it. Okay. Okay, I think we don't have any more questions. So yeah, again, feedback time today. Please spend your two minutes to help us with the feedback. And for example, let's say we have not covered any functional training of Bumni in this session because we wanted to focus on Docker setup and stuff. So if you need a functional training or an in-depth training about AWS deployments and all, please do let us know in the feedback form. We'll plan different sessions based on the interest. So I'm sharing the feedback link in the Zoom chat. Please spend your two minutes time and help us with the feedbacks. Okay, cool then. I'll stop the recording.